traditional sweet recipes from Malta, available online at www.traditionalmaltysweets.com. Traditional sweet recipes, creating a small slice of Malta that feels like home. Tassim Ali Miss Mark Avellino Sir La Anna Matim Spiteri Aventurus La Adef Kemoceani Kifukol Asam La Australia for Erota. Um, your story is quite an interesting one and one that I think our viewers are gonna, are gonna love hearing. Um, you ha are involved in ocean rowing, but more importantly, let's go to the beginning and tell our audience where how you got into ocean rowing. Yep, it's sort of a bit of a long story that I can make a little bit shorter. Um, <laughs> uh, years ago, I was living down in Gippsland, um, married, white picket fence, all the rest of it. And unfortunately, life didn't go the way that um, I thought it was going to go. And I ended up living back in Melbourne um, and looking at my life going, where did I end up, where, what am I doing? Um, I ended up doing the Everest Space Cam Trek and I heard about this thing called ocean rowing. A couple of Brits read me a book about, um, or told me about a book, um, about uh, Cracknell and Fogel who rode the Atlantic and I went, what, you can do that? Um, I rode at school as a child and um, it sort of appealed. Moved back to, um, or came back to Melbourne and um, said to my father, um, so do you want to row an ocean with me? I think his words were choice as to, um, no, go away, son. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and my fire was still lit, though. So I did this some um, uh, similar to internet dating, internet rowing, same, same. Um, so I ended up finding a skipper online. Went to the UK to meet him, first date. And um, <laughs> in my first date involved a 24-hour row. Wow. Um, loved it. Um, then we ended up at the pub where all good ocean rowers end. Um, so I'm hooked. I was meant to row the Indian Ocean in 2011. That didn't happen. Um, but also as part of the journey, Mum's got MS, as do 23 other thousand Australians. And I wanted to do something, as well as sort of experience my own horizons and challenging myself, to look at how I can help others. And so I started fundraising for MS. Contacted the organisation and they were really happy to have me on board. And um, we had a partnership from there. So over that time, um, I've learned a lot about MS, but on my first voyage, that was the Atlantic, because the Indian didn't happen as said in 2011, mm -hmm. but I needed to row an ocean. So in 2013, um, I've rowed the Atlantic as training. And about day 10, my back was in agony. I was just really in a dark place physically and mentally. I read an email, um, it was only two lines. It said, hi Tim. Um, I was diagnosed with MS three years ago. I've been hospitalised five times, twice by air ambulance. I used to be a professional fisherman. You inspire me. And I just went at that point, oh my Lord. Um, here's someone that is not by their choice going through their own hell. And I'm here by my choice, man up and row. Yeah. So that's what I did. And it still hurt, but I got through. Uh, then I rode the Indian Ocean in 2014 and everything went wrong that could have gone wrong with that row. It was insane. We left uh, Geraldton, Western Australia in uh, June 2014 and two months later we ended up in Seychelles. We were aiming for South Africa. So we had three hurricane systems that came through, so massive swells. We got capsized. We, our steering system failed, so we're on manual steering. We rode two hours on, two hours off, 24 hours a day. One of the crew members burned himself with boiling water, so he had to be evacuated by a cargo ship. Um, that uh, cargo ship ended up colliding with us and nearly sunk us. The lifeboat that got launched to then take a crew member off ended up pushing us back into the uh, cargo ship and we nearly sunk again. Oh God. Finally, we got that crew member on board and he got uh, taken back to shore in Australia. We then ended up um, getting pushed too far north to go to South Africa. We then ended up looking like we are gonna land in Somalia. Probably not the greatest with piracy. So we ended up um, changing our path to Seychelles. Now, unfortunately, um, that area is uh, the biggest uh, for pirates nowadays. Mm. And we've got approached by a pirate vessel, um, seven Africans on board a 60 foot motorised vessel. And I think they laughed at us, to be honest, and thankfully left us alone. Um, so from there, we ended up in Seychelles, got two world records and raised about $35,000 for MS. 
Then following year, um, I'd had enough of the ocean by then, so I decided to, with my um, girlfriend, ride around Australia. Wow. Was going to drive, but then thought, why not ride? So I rode from Melbourne to Alice, Alice to Broome via the Tanami, um, and ended up running out of water, getting rescued by a um, long haul trucky, um, and uh, stopping outside Wolf Creek Crater and thinking I'm nearly going to die um, when he pulls out a ham and cheese toasty and it was just awesome. Um, <laughs> met my girlfriend in Broome and then we rode down to, uh, that was all unsupported, uh, then we rode down to Perth and then rode across the Nullarbor back to Melbourne. Uh, then last year there was an ocean that I hadn't, sorry this year, there was an ocean that I haven't yet rode called the Pacific. So I was part of the Great Pacific Race, nine crews, uh, leaving Monterey, California, and uh, rowing to Hawaii. Um, but it was amazing. We had a crew of four. We had a 60-year-old man, 50-year-old woman, um, myself, and a 24-year-old lad. Um, after seven days, uh, we, the uh, female on board ended up getting a shoulder injury. She had to be uh, evacuated by the support yacht, so it was fine. We did that after three days, waiting for them to catch up to us. Uh, then we went on to a brutal regime. Instead of two hours on, two hours off, we did three hours on, hour and a half off, to ensure that no one was not on the oars at any time. Wow. It was brutal. Then the 60-year-old got struck down by, obviously, yeah, extreme fatigue, but also a urinary tract infection. Uh, so he had three days of recovery. So Brian and I ended up um, doing solo rowing for three days. Then when Greg came back on board, we then did three hours on, two hours off, it's amazing how much extra that half an hour does, yeah. but we're still rowing more than we're resting. Um, rowing an ocean is not, um, yes, it's physically hard, but it's not about being physically strong. Mm. It's about being tough up here, tough in here. If your head's there and your heart is with you, the rest of it you'll work out. And I think if you go through life with that philosophy, you'll not only be happy with who you are, but you'll always be achieving things that others look and just go, I just wish I could, mm. but don't wish you could, yeah. just do it. Yeah, yeah. Life is there to be lived, so enjoy it and strike your own path. Your website, or your, is it a website or a blog? Uh, it's a website and Facebook page, Facebook page yeah. um, so it's timsvoyage.com.au mm -hmm. uh, for the website and uh, the Facebook page is Tim's Voyage. Um, I'll always keep updating that um, with my various adventures. The next one is potentially going to be paddling down the Ganges, um, a thousand miles by local craft. Um, MS is very big in India as well as Australia, and Australia's got a lot of connections with India. And so it'll be looking at more an awareness side, but also the physical adventure. The Ganges has the rapids, has all the um, pollution, and um, also has the dead bodies that they uh, set through for um, embalming, etc. Mm. So it'll be a totally different challenge. Yeah, yeah. So to get it out, to get the word out there, and, and everything. Yeah. So you're actively raising funds for MS. Yes, I am. Uh, which um, anyone that goes to your Facebook page will be able to sort of click yep. onto. The website, yeah, and, definitely. And website. Um, what would you like to be the result of all of this? You know, when you finally decide I can't row anymore, or I don't want to row anymore, I've, I've done what I've done. Um, what would you like? The legacy to be of, of the work? Um, I think that just I've helped mm. um, and I don't think there's a dollar figure that uh, puts it to that. Um, my journey within the MS uh, was initially just raising funds for the major things and we're now looking to specify what the funds are going to be used for um, but I think it's more just to be able to help people and if I can inspire people because there are many people that live with MS that do follow what I do and if I can help um, give them a uh, an escapism, a thought or an idea to improve their quality of life, then that's it. Even if it's only for five minutes, then I've helped. And I think that you can get caught up in the big picture, but um, it's just those little things that you chip away at. And if you can get a smile from someone or someone reads what I do and just goes, oh, that's cool, that's all I need. And I think that would be a lovely legacy to pass over.